Hello there, good evening and welcome to the National News Broadcast. I'm Niket Karuna Ratna. And I'm Ashwa Nali. Let's have a look at the headlines first. The online safety bill was passed in Parliament. An additional tax of 310 million rupees has been charged from six companies that had earned excessive profit by reduction of tax on imported sugar. The motor vehicle used by the gunman of the Beliatta assassination has been found. Cash prices for informants who helped to trace illegal firearms. Teledramas of the national television have been evaluated at the Prix Genou International Awarding Ceremony in Germany. Donald Trump is in strong position in the US presidential race. On to those and other stories in detail now. The online safety bill which seeks to regulate online content was passed in Parliament with amendments today. And the Speaker of Parliament, Mahindi Yapabe Vardhana, informed the House that the online safety bill was passed in the committee stage with amendments. The second reading of the online safety bill was also passed in Parliament this evening with a majority of 46 votes. A total of 108 MPs had voted in favour, while 62 had voted against the bill. The division was followed by a committee stage debate, during which a heated situation ensued opposition MPs objected to certain amendments brought by the ruling party, accusing them of being unconstitutional and in violation of the Supreme Court determination. The Sectoral Oversight Committee on Media, Youth, Heritage and New Citizen had recently approved the online safety bill subject to the amendments determined by the Supreme Court. The bill was approved when the Sectoral Oversight Committee met in Parliament on Monday under the chairmanship of the MP Lalit Varnakumara. Thus, the bill, which was tabled in Parliament by Minister of Public Security Tiran Alas, was taken for the second reading debate yesterday and today. The online safety bill aims to ban online communication of certain statements in the country, prevent the use of online accounts, both authentic and inauthentic, for the use of prohibited purposes, to suppress the financing and other support of communication of false statements and other related matters. The online safety bill was published in the Sri Lankan government Gazette in September 2023. The Supreme Court of Sri Lanka thereafter determined that the several online safety bill provisions are not consistent with the constitution. In October, the government agreed to revise the bill in accordance with the Supreme Court's determinations announced on November 7, 2023. Key objectives of the bill include establishing the Online Safety Commission, making provisions to prohibit online communication of certain statements of fact in Sri Lanka, preventing the use of online accounts and inauthentic online accounts for prohibited purposes, making provisions to identify and declare online locations used for prohibited purposes in Sri Lanka, and suppress the financing and other support of communication of false statements of fact. Now, State Minister of Finance Dr. Anjit Siabala Pitiya says that over 310 million rupees have been charged as additional taxes from six companies that had earned excessive profits due to the reduction of taxes on imported sugar. Addressing the Parliament, State Minister Siabala Pitiya says that a forensic audit is being conducted regarding six more companies. Opposition leader Sajid Premadasa said that the government has lost an income of 16.7 billion rupees by the government's decision to reduce the tax for imported sugar. The opposition leader questions whether the responsible parties have been identified or whether any legal action has been taken against them. State Minister of Finance Dr. Ranjit Simbalapiti has said that a forensic audit is being carried out regarding 12 such companies at present. From six companies, the government has charged a sum of over 318 million rupees as additional taxes. Six more companies are being checked and suitable legal actions will be taken in the future. In the meantime, police headquarters say that people who provide information regarding illegal firearms and explosives will be rewarded with cash prices. The police headquarters further says that their confidentiality will be totally secured. This decision has been taken to commend the persons who provide genuine information that help the police to arrest the culprits. 
The police media division says that the acting IGP has informed all senior DIGs and DIGs and police divisions heads regarding the decision. A reward of 250,000 rupees will be given to an information that will lead to take an auto or semi-auto firearm with or without a suspect. A price of 150,000 rupees will be paid for information about a revolver with or without a suspect. For a repeat gun with a suspect will be given a price of 50,000 rupees. Such a gun without a suspect will lead to a price of 25,000 rupees. An information leading to seize a shotgun will be rewarded with a sum of 15,000 rupees. For recovery of imported hand grenade, a price of 10,000 rupees will be paid. Police media spokesman SSP Nihal Thaldua said that it is obvious that the crime has been committed under the connection of another party. The police also conduct investigations whether this has been a contract for money. It is also suspicious that a certain organized crime gang has manipulated this form overseas. A suspect who was selling narcotics near a leading school in Kandy was taken into custody and he has sold drugs in the guise of selling durian. The Alawatagoda police says that two grams of heroin and 4,100 fantasy sap tablets were seized from his possession. Police media spokesman SSP Nihal Thaldu was said that he is not a teacher but a vendor of selling durian. He was also said to be a member of the security forces. Some media reported that this suspect is a rugby coach in a leading school. However, OIC of the Alavatagoda police station said that he is not a rugby coach but an assistant of a rugby coach. The police media spokesman said that there is no evidence of the suspect selling drugs to school children. Meanwhile, on Tharaba All Lantern, the children's Christmas play aired by the national television has qualified for the final round of the pre Guinness International Awarding Festival. It was presented by Mohanji Ranganath. The final round of the awarding ceremony will be held in May this year in Munich in Germany. Mohanji Ranganath presented this child's play for this awarding ceremony under the 11 to 15 fiction category. This teledrama play has won a number of international awards. Mohanji Ranganath is the camera director of the single episode teledrama. In addition, teledramas presented by Shiran Ratnayaka, Suminda Tilakasena and Nishadi Rwanmali of the national television have also been evaluated in this awarding ceremony. Suminda Tilakasena has produced a teledrama titled Song of Sanara. Suminda Tilakasena has presented a non-fiction creation titled Diriyaka Anandir. Nishadi Ruanmali has presented a drama for the children between 7 to 10 years titled Diridaru Vata. It is significant that these four teledramas aired on SLRC have been selected from 400 teledramas fielded by television channels worldwide. <laughs> And in the meantime, National Dengue Control Unit says a slight decrease of dengue cases is reported during the past days of January this year compared to the month of December last year. At a press briefing held today, Director of the Unit, Consultant Dr. Sudat Samaravira, revealed these facts. <laughs> Dengue 
Director of the National Dengue Control Unit consultant Dr. Sudat Samaravira said that the majority of dengue patients are reported from the Jaffna district. As a result of the special dengue control programs implemented during the past period, there is a slight decrease of dengue cases in the country. Therefore, people should get together and keep their premises and environment clean without dengue breeding places. In brief, Army Command Lieutenant General Vikum Lianage added a new chapter to the history of parachute training recently as a trainee parachute trooper. The Army Commander completed the basic training of the parachute skills at the commando training schools in the Uva Kudalia with a group of local and foreign military officers. The Army Commander successfully achieved a parachute jump at the Uhuna Air Force Camp, showing his talent as a parachute trooper. The Sinek Aviation Training Institute was declared open recently under the patronage of Minister Nimal Siripala de Silva. Under the first stage, two three-month trainings will be started. The new institute hopes to conduct several other civil aviation trainings, including airports, air hosting and ground hosting. The historical Durutu Perahara of the Aswad Dumashri Buddha Shasana Alankar Mula Mahaviharya in Kuliapitiya will parade the streets on Friday. A media briefing in this connection was held at the Department of Government Information Auditorium today. Chief Incumbent of the Sri Buddha Shasana Alankar Mula Mahaviharya, Venerable Pallekagama Ratana Bharati Thera said that this year's Perahara will parade the streets at the auspicious time of 8.7 p.m. on the 26th of this month. The sacred casket will be placed on the sacred tusker of the Dalada Baligava at the auspicious time of 7.29 p.m. And for more news here at home, the Colombo High Court today declared death sentence to seven suspects under the charges of killing three persons and causing fatal injuries to two others. This incident had occurred in 2012. It was reported that three fishermen named the large Chaturanga came Saman and Priyantha Indrakumara, who left for fishing in a vessel from Kudavala Fishing Harbour in Tangala were killed by another group of fishermen on the 15th of October 2012 or a near date. Several fishermen who were injured in this incident gave evidence to police and investigations were carried out under the information given by them. Accordingly, eight persons including a woman were arrested and indicted them before the Colombo Magistrates Courts under the charge of culpable homicide. After lengthy hearing, Colombo High Court Judge Aditya Padavandige today declared the verdict and expressed that the allegations against the suspects have been proven without suspicion. Accordingly, the suspected woman was acquitted and the other seven fishermen were sentenced to death. And that's all the news from home. Stay tuned for foreign news after this break. Welcome back after the break and for news away from home, we have Donald Trump wins the New Hampshire Republican presidential primary, the second state contest to find the party's presidential candidate. With about 90% of the votes counted, the former president has a lead of 12 points over his last remaining rival, Nikki Haley. It's another major victory for Trump and President Biden says it is now clear that he will become the Republican no nominee in the election. Surrogates for Trump, Haley and Biden are now appearing on morning television shows in the US and are shifting focus to the 2024 election. 
But Haley says this race is far from over and vows to fight on until the vote in her home state of South Carolina next month. In his victory speech, Trump called Haley an imposter and brought former rivals Vivek Ramaswamy and Tim Scott out to endorse him. Americans will vote in November and the presidential contest is now looking increasingly likely to be a Trump-Biden rematch. And more on the subject of nominations, Hollywood has discovered the nominations for this year's Oscars, which will honor the film industry's finest stars and movies from the past 12 months. Accordingly, American fiction Anatomy of a Fall, Barbie, The ha Holder Wars, Killers of the Flower Moon, Maestro, Oppenheimer, Past Lives, Poor Things and The Zone of Interest have been nominated for the Best Picture Award. For the award of the Best Actor, Bradley Cooper for Maestro Wars, Killian Murphy for Oppenheimer and Jeffrey Wright for American Fiction have been nominated. And Annette Benning for Nyad, Lily Gladstone for Killers of the Flower Moon, Sandra Hutler for Anatomy of a Fall, Kerry Mulligan for Maestro and Emma Stone for Poor Things have been nominated for the award of the Best Actress. In addition, nominations have been announced for 20 more categories of Oscar 2024. The 96th Academy Awards will be handed out at a ceremony in Los Angeles on the 10th of March. The Israeli military says its ground forces have encircled Khan Yuni, the southern Gaza Strip's largest city. Troops have already reportedly advanced deeper into remaining parts of the city where they believe Hamas leaders are hiding in tunnels with hostages. Residents said that tanks had shut the last out of the city of the Mediterranean coast, effectively stopping them from fleeing southwards. There was also intense fighting reported around the city's two main hospitals. It came as funerals took place for some of the 24 Israeli soldiers killed on Monday on the deadliest day of the Israel Defense Forces since the start of its ground offensive in Gaza 12 weeks ago. According to the terrorist Hamas run health ministry, at least 195 Palestinians were also killed in Gaza over the previous 24 hours. The ministry says more than 25,400 people have been killed, mostly children and women, during the war between the Hamas and Israel. Six people have died, including three firefighters, after a truck carrying 60 tons of liquefied natural gas crashed and exploded in the Mongolian capital. Officials say that hundreds of firefighters had been sent to battle the blaze following the collision with were reported injured with the fire spreading to nearby buildings. According to Mongolia's Deputy Prime Minister, no casualties had been reported from inside any of the buildings. The Mongolia National Emergency Management Agency added that four children were among the injured, including one who was being treated for poisoning. Questions are now being asked about why a tank carrying such a danger into the residential neighborhood containing many schools. And in the meantime, all 74 people on board a Russian military plane were killed when the aircraft crashed in the Belgorod region near the Ukrainian border on Wednesday, Russian official says. A Russian Ilshin 76 military cargo transport plane has crashed in the Belgorod region bordering Ukraine. Russia's Ministry of Defense said that 65 captured Ukrainian military were on the plane heading to Belgorod region for a prisoner exchange. Ukraine's general staff said that the plane was transporting missiles for Russia's S-300 air defense systems. It made no mention of the prisoners of war. The crash is being investigated and the crash site is cordoned off with all operational dip services on site. A fertility breakthrough has offered hopes for saving the northern white rhino from extinction as there are only two of the animals left on the planet. Scientists have achieved the world's first IVF rhino pregnancy, successfully transferring a lab-created rhino embryo into a surrogate mother. The procedure was carried out with southern white rhinos, a closely related subspecies of the northern whites. Suzanne Holtze, a scientist at the Institute for Zoo and Wildlife Research in Germany, 
which is part of this biorescue project, said that to achieve the first successful embryo transfer in a rhino is a huge step. It has taken 13 attempts to achieve the first viable IVF pregnancy using southern white rhinos. Again, this will take time and there will be many scientific challenges to overcome. Some wildlife experts also argue that pouring more money and resources into a species that's as good as lost could be better used in saving more viable species. Now on sports news, Sri Lanka under-19 team won the second match of the ICC World Cup cricket tournament as well today. Sri Lanka defeated Namibian team by 77 runs. The under-19 ICC World Cup cricket tournament is being held in South Africa. Sri Lanka and Namibia played the C group. Namibia won the toss and invited Sri Lanka to bat first. Accordingly, Sri Lanka scored 133 runs all out in 37.5 overs. Supun Baduge not out 56. Sasha Wan Buran claimed four wickets. In reply, Namibia were all out just for 56 runs in 27 overs. Vishwa Lahiru and Rubishan Pereira claimed three wickets each. Now, Chamari Avapattu has been appointed as the captain of the World One Day Women's Cricket Team for 2023 by the International Cricket Council. And 11 more players have been included in this ICC team. Players have been selected for this team considering the skills shown by each players in the One Day Internationals last year. The Sri Lanka team led by Chamari has played 8 ODIs last year. She has scored 415 runs with an average of 69.16 in an inning. Chamri Atapattu was also named as the ICC T20 team. Colombo Royal College and DS Senanaika College became the co-champions of the All-Island Under-13 School First Festival Cricket Tournament. The final match was played today at the Mercantile Services Ground in Colombo. Batting first, the Royal College team scored 113 runs in the first innings. Ranudarana Singh has scored 22 runs. In bowling, Panidu Pabasara and Hamid Afdal claimed three wickets each. In reply, DSN and Ayaka College team scored 95 runs for nine wickets in the first innings. Miru Bandara and Rasindu Metsuka scored 16 runs each. In bowling, Gagan Gamage claimed three wickets for 15 runs. The match ended up without a decision and both teams were considered co-champions. That's all the news for tonight. Join us again at the same time tomorrow.